today our focus is, is going to be on, in, on pig and hive. So pig is, is the parallel data processing tool within the Hadoop uh, ecosystem. To understand, uh, to, to get a better understanding or to get a better grasp on how this works, I, I want to basically do some side-by-side -side comparisons. Um, and side-by-side and -side should be probably slide-by-slide -slide because I couldn't fit it all on a single slide and actually have it uh, readable. So um, you'll, you'll have to, to bear with me here. So I want to start using just a basic standard SQL statement like you, like you could potentially see in any data warehouse project. So we, we basically have some sales transaction data, we have some customer data, and we want to aggregate that up uh, at, say, the customer postal code um, level. This is just your, your kind of the run-of-the-mill uh, aggregate SQL statement here. We're using a group by to do our group by. We've got our aggregate function to sum. It's pretty, pretty standard stuff. We can actually accomplish the same exact thing in PIG. Now, the difference here is in SQL, we're, we're limited to the size of, uh, we're, we're limited in size based on how much data our SQL server uh, infrastructure can, can support. And that's going to be highly dependent on, uh, on your server and, and any storage and, and so forth. There's a lot of factors that go into that. Hey, Chris. Yes. Can I stop you for one second? Um, on my side, this, the slide deck looks like it's shifted to the right, so we're getting some words cut off. All right. One second. Let me, uh, let me see if I can change my resolution here. Is that better? That's perfect. Thank you. All right. No problem. Sorry about that. So what, again, what we're looking at is just a, a, common, data, a common data warehouse query. Um, th this query is going to be limited by, uh, by our SQL environment and how much data that can hold. In Hadoop, what we're dealing with is that, that big data. And, and typically what, when you hear the word big data, it's, re it's, it's referred to, uh, it's called that because of either the volume of data, which is size, the velocity, how fast that data is come, coming in, or the variety of the data uh, that, that you're dealing with. So when we deal with large volumes of data, the, this, is, this standard SQL approach kind of breaks down. So we can look at that exact same query. We can produce that, those exact same results using PIG. Now, I don't expect you to understand a lot of the script. We're actually going to walk walk through this uh, step by step and walk through the different parts, but I wanted you to see what a script that would accomplish the same exact thing would look like using PIG. And to break this down under the, under the first comment, you see we're actually loading and aggregating the transaction data, and we're, uh, we're doing that at the customer level for this, for this purpose. The second, the second thing we're doing is we're actually loading a second set of data for customers and then we join our two data sets, and the last line actually prints it out to the console screen. So if you think in terms of SSIS, if SSIS is a, is a common tool for you, you can think of it as having two sources of data within a data flow. You, do a, uh, you can calculate the aggregate using the aggregate transform. You can join using the merge join, and you, then you can dump it to a text file. That's exactly what we're doing within, within PIG, and it functions very similar uh, from a logical perspective uh, to the way SSIS functions. So how this works underneath the covers is what you just saw was referred to as PIG Latin. We're actually writing some script. That script is actually going into a preprocessor. That preprocessor is going to optimize the script, and what it's going to produce is one or more MapReduce jobs. Now, how many MapReduce jobs, what those jobs look like, are 100% dependent on the script you write. So it is possible to write, uh, as with almost any technology or script, to write bad script that's going to produce bad MapReduce jobs or inefficient MapReduce jobs. So we want to pay careful attention to that, and there's some techniques we can uh, use to see what's going on underneath the covers. 
So again, that piglatin is nothing more than a layer of abstraction for MapReduce that's actually going to do the heavy lifting for us. So let's dig in and actually look at PIG and at a lower level. So we want to focus in so that you understand exactly what's there, what's in this tool within, within Hadoop. And we're going to focus, we're going to start by data types because data types are important. We'll talk about inputs and outputs, ways we can load data and ways we can get data out of our jobs. We'll talk about some of the relational operators that are available as well as some of the user defined functions. Uh, or how you can create user-defined functions. And then I'll introduce you to PIG scripts and ways that we can actually test within PIG. So again, there's a, all the content is in the slide. I try to build these slides so that you could actually uh, work directly from the slides um, as far as knowing what functions are what and, and so forth. So within PIG, uh, we have uh, six scalar data types, and those are ones that you're probably familiar with within the SQL Server environment. So we have things like uh, integer, uh, long int, which is a, similar to a big int in a in SQL Server. We have floating point and double uh, fl our double precision, which is uh, just the bigger version. 